The Yellowstone Caldera is one of the world's most famous supervolcanoes, located in Yellowstone National Park. Here's what you should know about it. The most recent super eruption, about 0.63 million years ago, produced the Lava Creek Tuff and created the present Yellowstone Caldera. This followed two earlier major eruptions, the Huckleberry Ridge eruption 2.08 million years ago and another significant event between these two. The caldera remains geologically active but not dangerous in the immediate term. During June 2025, the University of Utah Seismograph Stations, responsible for the operation and analysis of the Yellowstone Seismic Network, located 60 earthquakes in the Yellowstone National Park region. The largest event of the month was a micro-earthquake of magnitude 2.7, this level of seismic activity is considered normal for the region. Recent research has provided new insights into future volcanic activity. Despite the large volume of magma pooling below Yellowstone, the caldera isn't likely to erupt anytime soon. That's because the magma sits in poor spaces in solid rock within the caldera, much like water in a sponge. Only when more than 40% of these pore spaces are filled can the magma become eruptible. Scientists have also identified that Yellowstone's magma system shows new activity, with the northeast sector possibly hosting future volcanic activity. The caldera experiences regular hydrothermal explosions, which are much smaller events than volcanic eruptions. Eruption from Black Diamond Pool in Biscuit Basin, Yellowstone National Park, Captured by a webcam on May 31, 2025 Yellowstone Volcano Observatory shows that these thermal features remain active. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory continuously monitors the caldera through seismic networks, ground deformation measurements, and gas emissions to track any changes in volcanic activity. The Yellowstone system is far more complex than originally thought. The shallower one is composed of rhyolite, a high silica rock type, and stretches from 5 kilometers to about 17 kilometers, 3 to 10 miles, beneath the surface and is about 90 kilometers, 55 miles, long and about 40 kilometers, 25 miles, wide. The chamber is mostly solid, with only about 5 to 15 percent melt. University of Utah seismologists discovered and made images of a reservoir of hot, partly molten rock 12 to 28 miles beneath the Yellowstone supervolcano, and it is 4.4 times larger than the shallower, long-known magma chamber. This discovery fundamentally changed our understanding of the volcanic system's scale. The dimensions are staggering. The hot rock in the newly discovered, deeper magma reservoir would fill the 1,000 cubic mile Grand Canyon 11.2 times, while the previously known magma chamber would fill the Grand Canyon 2.5 times volcano giving perspective on the enormous volume of material involved. Scientists monitor subtle changes in the caldera's shape as an indicator of magma movement. The upward movement of the Yellowstone caldera floor between 2004 and 2008, almost 75 mm in, each year, was more than three times greater than ever observed since such measurements began in 1923. From 2004 to 2008, the land surface within the caldera moved upward as much as 8 inches 20 centimeters, at the White Lake GPS station. This, breathing, of the caldera reflects changes in magma chamber pressure below. A, breathing, cap of magma has been discovered inside the Yellowstone supervolcano, and it might help determine when the volcano will next erupt, a new study has found. This 2025 research suggests the magma cap acts like a pressure relief valve, potentially preventing eruptions by allowing gases to escape gradually. The current volcanic system sits atop a much older geological foundation. Between 542 and 66 million years ago, long before the supervolcano became part of Yellowstone's geologic story, the area was covered by inland seas. The dual chamber system represents one of the most thoroughly studied volcanic plumbing systems on Earth, providing crucial insights into how supervolcanoes function and what conditions might trigger future eruptions. The Yellowstone system is part of a much larger volcanic story stretching across the western United States. Hotspot volcanism commenced approximately 17 Ma in northeastern Nevada and continues to the present. Ignimbrites and tuff deposits marginal to the Snake River Plain record the path of the movement of the North American plate over the stationary hotspot at approximately 2.35 cm per year. It formed the eastern Snake River Plain through a succession of caldera forming eruptions. The resulting calderas include the Island Park Caldera, Henry's Fork Caldera, and the Bruno Jarbage Caldera. The hotspot currently lies under the Yellowstone caldera. This creates a volcanic breadcrumb trail, showing where the hotspot has been over millions of years. 
The current Yellowstone system has produced three catastrophic super eruptions. 1. Huckleberry Ridge eruption, 2.1 Ma, this eruption of 2,450 cubic kilometers, 590 cubic miles, of material is thought to be one of the largest known eruptions in the Yellowstone hotspots history. This eruption, 2.1 million years ago, is the third most recent large caldera forming eruption from the Yellowstone hotspot. The first cycle caldera forming event was the eruption of the Huckleberry Ridge Tuff at 2.0773 plus or minus 0.0034 million years ago, during transitional magnetic polarity. Its thickness exceeds 1 km, 0.62 miles, in the Red Mountains area. 2. Mesa Falls Eruption, 1.3 Ma, this middle eruption was smaller than the other two but still qualified as a super eruption. 3. Lava Creek Eruption, 640,000 years ago. The steep facing caldera wall, 500 meters tall, formed when the area in the foreground collapsed during eruption of the Lava Creek Tuff 640,000 years ago. The thick West Yellowstone rheolite lava flow erupted about 110,000 years ago, and the Nez Perce Creek flow erupted 160,000 years ago. This most recent super eruption created the current Yellowstone caldera we see today. Rich Tuff and Lava Creek events are considered super eruptions because they expelled over 240 cubic miles, 1,000 cubic kilometers, of material. Occurring just over 2 million years ago, this eruption laid down vast deposits of ash from plumes that rose tens of kilometers into the atmosphere, called ash fall deposits. In addition, ground hugging pyroclastic flows that reached over 100 kilometers from source formed thick deposits across the landscape. Since the last super eruption, Yellowstone has remained volcanically active with smaller eruptions. The most recent series of eruptions, 160,000 to 70,000 years ago, extruded more than 20 thick rheolite lava flows and domes, most of them within the youngest caldera showing the system continues to evolve through less catastrophic volcanic activity. The hotspot's long-term migration means that in the future, the center of activity will continue moving northeast, eventually leaving the current Yellowstone region behind. A future Yellowstone super eruption would have devastating global consequences. If another catastrophic caldera forming Yellowstone eruption were to occur, it quite likely would alter global weather patterns and have enormous effects on human activity, especially agricultural production, for one to two decades. If there were a very large explosive eruption, it could impact the global climate by emitting ash and gas into the stratosphere, which could block sunlight and lower global temperatures by a few degrees for a few years, explains USGS scientist Mike Poland. The mechanism for this climate disruption is well understood. A volcanic winter is a reduction in global temperatures caused by droplets of sulfuric acid obscuring the sun and raising Earth's albedo, increasing the reflection of solar radiation, after a large, sulfur-rich, particularly explosive volcanic eruption. The ash distribution from past Yellowstone eruptions demonstrates the continental scale of impact. Eruptions of the Yellowstone volcanic system have included the two largest volcanic eruptions in North America in the past few million years. The third largest was at Long Valley in California and produced the Bishop Ash Bed. The biggest of the Yellowstone eruptions occurred 2.1 million years ago, depositing the Huckleberry Ridge Ash Bed. Glenn A. Izzett estimated that an additional 2,000 kilometers 3, 480 cubic miles, of ash was dispersed as fallout across North America. Tephra fallout from this event is known as the Huckleberry Ridge Ash Bed, formerly Perlet Type B. Its area covered exceeds 3,400,000 km2, 1,300,000 square miles. Modern modeling confirms the vast reach of future eruptions. In the unlikely event of a volcanic super eruption at Yellowstone National Park, the northern Rocky Mountains would be blanketed in meters of ash, and millimeters would be deposited as far away as New York City, Los Angeles and Miami, according to a new study. Such a giant eruption would have regional effects such as falling ash and short-term, years to decades, changes to global climate. Those parts of the surrounding states of Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming that are closest to Yellowstone would be affected by pyroclastic flows the most immediately deadly aspect of the eruption. During the three caldera-forming eruptions that occurred between 2.1 million and 640,000 years ago, tiny particles of volcanic ash covered much of the western half of North America. That ash was likely a third of a meter deep several hundred kilometers from Yellowstone and several centimeters deep farther away providing a historical template for understanding future impacts.
The combination of immediate regional devastation and prolonged global climate disruption would make a Yellowstone super eruption one of the most significant natural disasters in human history, though such events remain extremely rare on human timescales. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and don't forget to explore more geological wonders on our channel.